Remember, you can easily center a soft pad of clay just by hammering it. The wheel, I'm not even turning it by my foot. I'm just turning it by my hand, tapping it. So just a mound like that. It's not sticky, it's not wet. It's a firm clay. And now I can just place anything on here to trim it. This form actually, I would probably kick the wheel and turn it. But I just showed that from my wheel class, so let me get a more sculpture. Something like this might be more appropriate for like a hand building demonstration. There's no real symmetry. You know, it's bulging out here, it's bulging in here. It's definitely not flat on the top. So I'm not gonna kick the wheel and turn it like the machine that it is. I'm just gonna turn it very slowly by hand. And this would be something you can do on a banding wheel as well. Uh, so just prior to sitting it down and making sure that it's secure, I really want to study how thick the floor is, how thick the wall is, and identify where I need to remove clay. So I'll make a few marks. I'll try to remember that the center of my floor is already just as thin as my wall, so there's not much clay to remove here. Here, however, I have quite a bit of clay to remove. So now I know that before I flip it upside down. And once you're ready to start cutting clay away, just sort of tap it down until it's level. Um, it's not critical that this is centered because I'm going to have such a slow turning wheel. But it is important that it be level. It just makes it easier. So now that it's relatively flat and level here, the next thing I'll do is make a mark It gives me some sort of an aim about where I want my foot ring to be. On this form, I have the diameter of this circle that I just marked is about one half the diameter of my wall. My first move is just going to dive down into that line. My tool is right on the outside of that line. Maybe I'll do this. So I'm just turning this wheel by hand. Notice my index finger is on my blade, the handle's in my palm, my free hand is the hand that's slowly turning this wheel, while my dominant hand is pulling that blade right on the line that I made. So that kind of establishes the depth that I want to get to with my next cut. So I'm going to go down in there with this bigger part of the blade, the, this long straight part. So now that I'm at the depth I want, you know, I don't really want to go much deeper than that right now. I'm going to put my finger on here again. This time that finger's serving as a gauge 
and it's sort of putting a lot of pressure on this blade for me too. Keeping my handle vertical will allow me to cut horizontally. If I tilt the angle of my handle, it's going to tilt my blade, and that blade's either going to dive deep or pull out. I'm just trying to make one full revolution before I complete that cut. So that took off a significant amount of mass. So now, rather than just leaving that mark, I think I'm going to you know, see what the rest of the form is looking like and try to finish removing a little bit of thickness while being sensitive to some shapes and textures that might be happening already in the piece. So there's a vertical element on the wall, which intersects with kind of the starting point and the stopping point of this carving mark. There's also a line here that terminates. That horizontal line is another clear indicator that I had a place to stop this one swipe. So all of these ways that I just removed the clay are somehow paying attention to what's already happening up here in the wall. Next, before I even trim this part, I'm just gonna check the weight. So I definitely have a little bit of extra clay down here but it's not so thick that it's gonna be a problem. Better to be a little too thick than too thin. Next, we want that to go back down where it came from if you can. Because I know this is really thin right here, I'm going to be very careful not to go very deep. This tool can sometimes go too deep too fast. When I have a really thin floor, I like to use the scoop end of this knife. This will have a tendency to remove a little bit of clay while pushing it inward slightly. So I'm really going to be carving sort of out in here and in here it's more or less just going to be pushing that down slightly
So that edge was pretty steep to just remove that one part. Now I can kind of flatten it out a little bit. And it'll be just taking a slight bit while sort of compressing that down. Last, I just want to pay attention to the texture that I leave. You obviously don't want all of this rubble and thin burrs. They're fragile, they're going to mark up somebody's table. You can burnish this with something metal, almost using it just like a fingertip. that pretty smooth. The other thing that you could do is using the smooth handle of your tool. This tool is actually allowing me to slightly bevel this edge. You're always going to hear me say that on whatever the underside of whether it's wheel thrown, hand built, cup, bowl, plate, bottle, do you see how there's a slight crown on that rim? The foot tapers off to the edge.